Okay. So let's just start talking. <laughs> see what happens. Let's see how, like, dude, I can get and stuff. Like, help me out here. All right, all right. All right. So we're, we're talking with Ellis about his new philosophies that he's been recently reading about. So tell us about uh, Nietzsche. Okay, like, Nietzsche man, like. Oh, I, I apologize. Nightshy. Yeah, that's right. Oh, dude, like, thank you. Thank you. I've been totally, like, butchering his name. Like, okay. Because you're the, you got your, you got your degree in, like, that, like, people science, right? Like Metaphysical people studies, yes. Okay, so, like, you know your shit. Yes. You know your shit. Okay, so, mm -hmm. how, what was it again? Nightshy. How do you feel about Nightshy? Nightshy. Yes. Okay, man, that sounds like some tasty ass shit. Like some tea, you know? Like you have a nighttime, like, mmm. Little cinnamon. It does sound like, ch like chai tea, but. So, like, yeah, well, you know what? That explains some things then. Like, like if his name is Nightshy, like, he was probably, like, up all night drinking chai, and that's, like, why he, like, wrote so much shit. Like, you did? Yeah. Like, okay, so, like, anyway, like, Nightshy was, like, he was really into this stuff, like, called, like, I think it was, like, nihilism or something, where it's, like, nothing really matters because, like, we don't, like, like, we're just, like, this tiny thing on this pale blue dot. Oh, shit. I think I fucked up the computer. Okay. Anyway, we're, like, this tiny little... On this pale blue dot, like, in the middle of, like, this ocean of the universe. And, like, we just, like, don't fucking matter. Like, but what's really cool about that is, like, it can broaden your whole perspective on, like... Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, completely corked. I just corked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just. Okay, I think <laughs> I about blew out this fucking candle with my laughter. <laughs> Any, anyway, so like. Like, when I was reading him, like, I got into, like, the fourth chapter of his Communist Manifesto, and I... <laughs> and I was like, dude, like, before I read this book, like, I was just, like, such an asshole, and would, like, treat people like shit, and... And then, like, I read this book and, like, read about how, like, all of these people in Oklahoma were, like, starving to death and shit. And... <laughs> and, like, they had to, like, get in these, like, old, like, cars that, like, they had to make into, like, a house. Because, like, their entire belongings, like, had to go with them because like the man was <laughs> the man like you know the man not like the man it was like the man was like pushing them out because of some like bullshit so like, president hoover yeah that's that, the one that ruled russia right yeah that dude like he was just like fucking a bunch of shit up and like so all of these like oklahoma people had to like get in their cars and, like, they didn't even fucking have cars. Like, they had to go and, like, spend, like, two bucks or whatever it was back then on a car and then, like, drive all the way out to California and, like, how they thought that it was going to be, like, this idealistic, like, future where they would have, like, a bunch of peaches and shit and grapes, but the grapes were actually of wrath. <laughs> Like, and so it's like. <laughs> like, no, like, this isn't funny, man. Like, I'm sorry. 
hilarious. No, like... No, I'm laughing from the pure joy of no, the conversation. No, like, you aren't taking it seriously, man, because, like, these people were suffering. They had to go all the way from Oklahoma to... <laughs> To California. <laughs> oh. And, like, and basically, like, what he was saying, that, like, nothing fucking matters. And it just, like, made me realize that inside, like, I was just so focused on myself and not, like, the collective that I was missing the point, dude. Like, I was, oh, my God. I was missing the point. Of, like, everything. And, like, it only took me four chapters to realize that this dude... Wait, what was his name again? Uh, Night Chai. Night Chai. I was thinking, like... I was thinking someone totally different. I got this. Okay, so Night Chai was, like, telling us that, like, we need to stop, like, being so selfish and, like, making people move from their land because that's, like, fucked up. Like, oh, my God, that's so white. And we need to start, like, realizing that nothing really matters. And then, like, we'll love each other and, like, work together. Because, you know? Well, speaking of working together, can you compare and contrast Marx and uh, Weber for me? Okay, so this dude, Marx, like, he wrote this book, like, about... um like, okay, wait, which Marx? Are we talking, like, Groucho or... Groucho, yes. Okay, Groucho Marx. Like, he he was so big into this, like, communist theory. And, like, I always mix him up, like, with his brothers and shit. But, like, he is really the dude. Like, they were all really good at what they did. They all had, like, these really cool philosophies. But, like... Except for Harpo, like, I opened his book, and there was just, like, nothing inside. Like, the pages were blank. And then the very last page, like, I opened it, and you want to know what it fucking said? Do tell. It said, honk. I mean, like, I respect the dude. I understand that he has, like, a lot of experience, but I it just wasn't for me, man. Like, whatever. Anyway... People may disagree, but whatever. Okay, so Groucho Marx, like, he led, like, all of these people called, like, the Bolsheviks in this revolution. And, like, it was pretty much just, like, the working class was, like, completely oppressed. So what you have to do is, like pretty much, like, talk super fast so that no one can understand you and leave no time for people to laugh at the jokes they can't understand. And that way, like, you can just, like, really transcend the anus of time and become, like, a true collective. <laughs> and, like, like, what's really cool about that is, like, it actually works. Like, people will say... That, like, communism doesn't work, but they're not paying attention enough. Like, they're just, like, completely dismissing it and not being open-minded. We're almost running out of time. Do describe Weber to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. That That's a grill. Ex ex dis ex please explain to me Weber. Okay, so Weber, like... The reason why he's called Weber, first of all, let's get a little background here for our viewers that aren't quite sure who this is. So Weber is like, he was this philosopher slash psychologist slash people metaphysicist. Uh, and people magazine editor. And he was, yeah, like, wow, this dude did like everything. Like, he, and I think like why he's, okay, why he's called Weber is because he had this, like, this dude had a lot of fetishes, man. Like, I don't want to, like, king shame or anything. Like, this is totally cool. You're talking to a dude that, like, has some of the weirdest fucking fetishes ever. Um, but, like, this dude, like, the reason why he's called Weber, because his real name's, like, Nijinsky or something, but, like, he, he would, like sneak out in the middle of the night and, like, go in people's backyards and, like, 
do certain things to their grills. Like, oh, that's you know, I don't want to, like, say the word on television because, like, some of my viewers might be, like, a little, you know, young and stuff, and I don't want to corrupt anyone, but, like, he would do things to Ooh. these grills. And I don't know why he didn't just, like, go out and buy a grill for himself and, like, put it in his bedroom. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. We don't know because he's dead. But he did leave some writings behind that, like, he was totally anti-Marx. Like, he just thought... Marx was, like, a complete, like, like, loser or something. Like, because he's just, like, in his book, like, Trash and Marx. But, but, like, that aside... Is the book called Trash and Marx? No. It's called, like... I don't remember what it's called. I was really high when I read it, but I know it was there. I know it was a book because I, I... I read it, and, like... The dude was, like, telling, he was telling us about, like, all this really cool stuff. Like, for instance, like, like, dude, did you know about the apples? No, what about the apples? You haven't read about the apples? Like, I thought you had a degree in this shit, man. Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. Ignorance is permissible. Like, he, he, like, okay, I... I, I like apples, okay? Like, I, I eat one every day. But, like, I was reading into his book, and, like, by the end of it, I realized, like, oh, my God. So, you know how they tell you, you know, when we're kids, they just, like, indoctrinate us with all this bullshit about how an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well... I just, like, had my mind blown because I found out that, no, like, that's just some, like, bullshit, like, that Big Brother, like, wants to wants us to think because, like, if we eat enough apples and then they, like, poison the apples, like, we'll just end up, like, as their, like, mindless pawns and, like... Like, so I'm just like, oh my god, like, I've been eating all these apples for all these years and thinking it was good for me, and, like, it's just another way for the government to control us. So, you know what? I said, I said, I said, pardon my French, but I said, fuck those apples, I'm not eating apples anymore, so that's why this one's only half eaten. You see this? This is when I realized... That Weber was not full of shit. I, I can't. I can't. I can't do it anymore. No. But anyway, like... Well, speaking of full of shit, uh, we have one more question for you. Okay. Give us your ideas on meditation. Oh, meditation, man. So, like, dudes, like, I get really, like, pumped up about meditation. Be and I'm so glad you asked. Because, like, I've been meditating for, like, three weeks now. And, like... The way it's changed my brain, man. Like, it's not just my brain. It's my whole philosophy. And my, like, I can, like, feel it in my body. So, basically, like, what you do is you sit on, like, a cushion or some shit. And I gotta be honest. Like, sometimes I get I get a little lazy. And so, I, I do, like, a, a nice gentle lay down. And I just, like, mm, I do these... I, I, what you have to do is, like, it's really simple. So, like, basically you just sit there and you focus on your breath. And what that does is it, like, opens up your mind to, like, a bunch of things that you didn't realize were there. And they, like, start to bubble up from the, the, the swampy subconscious mind. And, like, you start to, like, really become enlightened and shit. Like... You just feel this, like, sense of, like, inner peace, and you really start to, like, know yourself. Like, you just, and, like, if you really do it right, and you, and you, you're sitting there, and you really just, like, imagine that you're, like, lifting up from your body and, like, floating over your body and watching it, you can really just, like, it's like what I was talking about a few minutes ago. You can, like, transcend the anus of time. 
And, like, you can see yourself just, like, out there. And, dude, it's, like, it's transformed my life. Like, I can't even imagine, like, where I was before I started meditating. And now, like, I even walk around with these, like, little candles and shit. Because it's, like, so calming and, like, I'm not, like, in a rage anymore. And I can just, like, handle it. You know? I, I do. Thank you. You've been quite okay. fascinating. Thank you for your time. And it's Henry of Mary Street, everybody. Thank uh, you. Uh, thanks. Okay. I'm done.